Yes. Um, depression and anxiety, is it? Is it um, what kind of results are you getting? Well, I mean, I think it's certainly psilocybin in, in the modern era is uh, probably the most powerful treatment of resistant depression we have. Yeah. It's, it's just really staggering how effective it is. And you, people might say, well, hang on a second. You know, that's, you know you're talking, how, how can you cure addiction to alcohol, to cocaine, to, to heroin and depression? It's, I mean, they're de completely different diagnoses. And the answer is, well, they are different diagnoses. In fact, they actually come from different parts of the brain, the, 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 the drives and the, and the memories and the behaviours. But the way, reason psychedelics can work across these different disorders is because they change the way people think. The disorders psychedelics work in are what we call internalizing disorders. They're all disorders in which people have thought processes which they can't escape from. Mm -hmm. Very often, they know that their thoughts are wrong. I mean, maybe you're alcoholic, I mean, certainly many of mine over the years, they don't want to drink. They hate, they don't even enjoy drinking, but they can't mm -hmm. stop. And they, you know, depressed people, you know, mostly they know they're not worthless. They know they've been traumatized. It's not their fault, but their brain keeps thinking it is their thought. And, and those deeply entrenched thought processes, they're the only things we know of that can break those deep, those deep thoughts are, are psychedelics. Yeah. So you've actually got models of what's going on in the brain. I mean, you mentioned GABA at the start of it. I mean, the GABA's the, the GABA amino yeah, butyric acid from memory that the, the diazip, the diazepam and uh, the, the benzodiazepines work yeah. on yeah. and you've, you've you've mentioned 80 other transmitters which is is quite quite incredible i mean i mean do you have i know you have quite modern sophisticated scanning techniques and understanding of the biochemistry are there plausible mechanisms that you can now understand and give evidence for for, for how, how the um, psychedelics are working yeah, probably we got, it's, we, I could give you a better explanation, sorry, not better, I could give you a, a, a better evidenced explanation as to why psychedelics work than I could for how SSRIs work. Right. And that's one of the, one of the, that's been one of our ambitions, because one of, people say, well, okay, so you can lift depression with psychedelics, but you can lift depression with lots of other things, you know, mm. CTs, SSRIs, tricyclics. And w about 15 years ago, we we started thinking: Well, are we are we actually doing just the same but faster, or are we doing something different? So we set out to specifically use brain imaging to test that question. And it's absolutely clear that there are fundamental differences in the way these drugs work. And in the as I've already mentioned, what psychedelics do is they disrupt ruminative ingrained thought processes which keep people thinking the wrong thoughts what ssris do and this is you know we've shown this very clearly is that ssris work in a different part of the brain so psychedelics work in the cortex the very high level thinking parts of the brain the parts of the brain there would be just behind here where we are the, 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 the very human part of the brain exactly the bits mm -hmm. of the brain which which is where all the human self-awareness and mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and analytical and communicative still skills exist. Whereas antidepressants work deep in the brain. They work in a, at, a, at, a, at a more primitive level. They work in the, what's called the limbic system, the stress circuit. And what they do is they dampen down stress responses. And, and the analogy I like to use is this, uh, is that drugs like SSRIs are to depression what the plaster of Paris is to a broken bone. The plaster of Paris doesn't heal, heal the bone, but it allows the bone to heal because it stops the bone moving. SSRIs dampen down the stress centers in the brain and allow the brain to recover from the chronic stress, which has actually damaged them to some extent. But the problem with that is that SSRIs don't just dampen down stress. They also dampen down the positive emotions, because this is, these are the emotional centers. They're not just stress centers. They're the emotional centers. So people on SSRI sometimes say, well, yeah, I'm not, I don't feel the stress anymore. I can watch TV and, you know, see people, you know, people being hurt on TV without getting those emotional reactions. 
but I don't. I'm not as positive. I don't get as much pleasure out of life. I'm. I'm not as interested in in, in food. I'm not as in, generally. I have a more narrow repertoire of emotions, and for some people that is, you know, rather, you know, it's disappointing. Well, for anyone, it's disappointing, but but for some people, it's, you know, it means that they don't want to stay on the medication. And we've shown clearly now that SS, uh, psilocybin doesn't do that. Psilocybin has no impact at all on the emotional centre. You can still have full range of emotions, but not be depressed. Mm. And of course, a full range of emotions is intrinsic to what it means to be human as well, isn't it? Well, yes, I, um, absolutely. Most of us want, want you know, particularly the good ones. <laughs> yes, the good yeah, way. I could do without some of them, yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm, I was, when you said ruminative uh, disorders, there, the, the, the idea of the ruminant who keeps chewing the cud. Is exactly you know, right. the idea it goes into the stomach and you come back up and you chew it and it goes back down and it comes up and you chew it some more. You know, who watching can't relate to that? get these ideas out of my head. I don't want to be thinking about this anymore. I don't want to think in these terms anymore. And yet, yeah. it's, for years yeah. and decades. Because that's because your brain on. is, one of the, <laughs> the problem with the brain is, you know, the strength of the brain and the weakness of the brain. Your brain is an amazing learning machine. You know, the, we have been talking, what, for nearly an hour now. We've used thousands of words. Yeah, yeah. And you've understood every single word. You know, you know what every word means. You might not have understood all the concepts, but you probably have as well. But the fact is, we can learn words to a precision that yeah. means we fantastic learning. But if you learn the wrong thing, if you learn that thought, well, maybe I left the tap on, maybe. It, and you can't stop thinking that thought. If, <laughs> then it consumes you. And that's the problem. The amount of times I've got to the car and gone back to check the front door when I know I've shut it. <laughs> well, <laughs> that just happens all the time. The good news, John, is that you've got to, to make a, to make the diagnosis of OCD. You've got to do it three times. All right. Okay. Right. So that, 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 that's very, very, very can encouraging. I, can I, Thank you. <laughs> can I just, can I just say a little bit more though about the imaging? Yeah, please. Oh yeah. It's a fa fascinating area. So what I think perhaps the most amazing thing we've discovered is not that how psychedelics work in the brain. It's not that we can treat depression with psychedelics. Is it when we do treat depression with psychedelics and we image the brains of people after they've recovered from their depression and we ask them how they feel, they say, well, yeah, I feel like um, my brain works more flexibly. I, I, I'm able, when a negative thought comes in, I'm able to push it to one side and change the, my direction of thinking. My thoughts are more flexible. And when we scan their brains, their brains are more flexible. And that, that to my mind, is, I mean, that, it's almost, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's almost too good to be true, but it is, people's brains are more flexible after they've, um, after they've taken psychedelics. And that is why they, people, that's why they have such enduring effects. Because if you've got a more flexible brain, you can solve problems. Yeah. You know, you know you, you, it's more creative. You, you're more, and also you're, you're more, in, you know, you can look outside of yourself. Because there's brain imaging studies that show depressed people consume so much more of their brain thinking about themselves than the non-depressed people. Mm -hmm. And that means they haven't got the resources, brain resources to do other things like engage with nature or engage with friends, think about other things. Mm. Amazing that you can see the, um, the, the sort of neurophysiological activity and if you like the, the uh, I was going to say the behavioral correlates of that, but it's not really that. It's, it's the human experience of that. Yes. The, the, the human perception of that. Exactly. It is. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, I hope it gets replicated, but <laughs> we've, we've replicated it twice in two separate cohorts of depressed people. I, I just, yeah. I, need a, I need another group to do it to make sure it's true. <laughs> but, but it is, it is fast. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to see people who have escaped from this, you know, this, the yeah. chains of depression, which are absolutely, I mean, we know they're destructive. 15% of people with severe depression commit suicide. They, you know, it's, it's, it's an evil disorder and it's yeah. lovely to see them liberated. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's possible to feel wretched beyond description. Uh, hopefully we'll never fully understand how bad depression can be, but. Well, I, yeah. Hope you even don't. just being around the edges of it, it's, it's pretty bad.